All right, good afternoon, everybody. I'm Derek Aikum. I work for the California Department of Fish and Wildlife uh, in an office that we rent up in Hopland. Um, I want to give a plug to my landlord at the moment, um, the Hopland Research and Extension Center, um, affiliated here with the University of California, Davis. Um, if you happen to need a field research site, look into the HREC um, centers. There's 11 across the state, two of them, Hopland, and then one over in uh, Nevada County that do rangeland stuff. So enough of that. Um, again, I'm Derek Akam. I want to save the world, um, but I can't. Um, and so I need help from other people for doing this. In part in this presentation, I had a lot of help from Todd Carlin, who used to be a scientific aide uh, working with me this summer. He jumped ship and got a career uh, appointment with the department in Sacramento. Uh, Andrew Bartshire, who works for University of California Sea Grant, a cooperative extension in Sonoma County with the UC Broodstock Monitoring Program. You'll hear a lot more about his work um, from Marishka coming up next. Uh, Taylor Berryman, who used to be a SIA aide working for us, who went down to Santa Barbara County and is working for private consulting now. Um, I wouldn't have been able to do this workshop without them. So um, you may have heard there's a drought going on. Um, back in 2014, um, the department got the direction from the top down that we were going to do drought monitoring and they came to field folks like myself and said, what are you gonna do to monitor for the drought? Um, I was a little delinquent in coming up with it, something to do, um, but I thought mapping out where the water is on the creeks and doing some flow measurements might, might be kind of cool. Um, I had heard um, the broodstock monitoring program had been doing this wet dry mapping thing for the last couple of years where they go out once a year um, and look at stream flows at the driest point. Uh, I had heard about this grad student working in Salmon Creek who was working with landowners and something to maybe or maybe not do with an iPhone app where people could automatically GPS where the creek was wet. Um, that was Cleo. I met him a couple weeks ago. Um, that sounded kind of simple and easy, something that I could do because I still had my day job um, and I had to do all this other work too. So where are we going to go? I had this question and I said, okay, where are the streams going to be wet? Um, it's kind of a fundamental question. Um, but we don't really have good answers to where the water persists in these creeks. Um, so I thought, well, I need to find something simple to do that. So here, um, how does your stream go dry? Um, I asked how, not why. Um, we can all speculate, and some of us are smarter than others about being able to quantify um, some of the whys, but rather, um, how does your stream go from something like this in the uh, winter, late spring to something more similar to this um, in August? Uh, where does all that water go? Um, where can the fish hang out? I'm, most of what I do is habitat assessment and in-stream habitat restoration. I work with grant programs to get this done. Um, in the past, we've made some mistakes with putting um, uh, in-stream habitat structures in areas like this where there aren't any fish in the summertime. So maybe we could better direct our efforts if we better understood where the water and the fish were. Um, how did we come about these uh, streams that I did some monitoring on? There are four main creeks that um, we did monitoring on. Come up on the slide here. Um, my GIS skills are nowhere near as good as everybody else's, but if you look at the top of the map, And the laser, oh, there it is. So look at the top of the map. That's Mill Creek outside of Healdsburg is one of the four coho uh, monitoring streams. You've been hearing a lot about that. Oh, by the way, this is the Russian River. Sorry about that. Um, this big, long serpentine creek here is Mark West Creek, just north of Santa Rosa. Uh, this creek with the big hook in it is Green Valley Creek, uh, our powerhouse coho stream in the basin. And then next door to it is Dutch Bill Creek. Um, you just heard about that from David. Um, I added a fifth stream out here, um, Holbert Creek. Um, as part of the broodstock program, we were looking to identify a short list of streams where we might be able to outplant fish to the future because um, uh, last year we were looking, we were consistently breaking records every year at fish production over at the hatchery. Um, this year that wasn't the case due to some water quality issues, but we still need to have a short list of streams that maybe we could expand to. Holbert came up at more than one meeting. I kept raising my hand and saying, but doesn't that creek go dry every year? Uh, why do we want to put fish there? Uh, since the question kept coming up, I thought, well, I better get out there and figure out if it really is wet or if it's dry. So another good reason for why to select Holbert Creek is um, 
Um, I was going to figure out how to insert some really cool reference about um, where we're going. We don't need roads. Um, but roads are really, really convenient, and they lend themselves well to some very old school survey methods, uh, such as windshield methods or vehicular method, uh, methods. Uh, Holbert Creek's got a gut road that goes right up the middle of over two thirds of the creek, so you can observe most of the creek from the windshield of your car. Um, makes the assessment very rapid, um, which was another goal of mine, is how can I get out and do these stream surveys very, very quickly, um, wet, dry lent itself to that because you hike the creek and you, you know, is the creek wet or is it dry? And check that off in your data sheet. It's pretty easy to do. Um, you can add some other things to that. We did add, uh, measure some basic water quality parameters, temperature, dissolved oxygen, and conductivity. Um, we did take notes where we found things like wet springs and wet tributaries. Um, I have yet to be able to incorporate those into some of my maps. Um, but anyhow, here is uh, Holbert Creek 2014 and 2015, uh, very, very quick. So in April of last year, um, where it's gray colored, I didn't do any surveying there, it's unknown what the flows are, but you can presume that the whole thing is wet. Um, blue is wet, yellow is intermittent, so that means that there was some disconnection in between pools and ripples, and then red is dry. So April. June, um, you can see that there are some wet reaches, but a lot of dry creeping in there. Uh, July, um, and then I didn't get out at the end of last summer, but I did get at the beginning of fall, collected some data in October. Um, and in October, it was pretty clear that I missed the driest part. You could tell that there had been some pools that had re-wetted and some areas that had reconnected. Um, so after October of last year, um, back in December, it rained once. Um, which was kind of thrilling, um, but one rainstorm does not end a drought. So back in earlier this year, we were back on for drought monitoring. So I redoubled my efforts. Uh, I added the four additional coho streams, and I kept Holbert on there um, just because it, it seemed like a really good idea, and it was very easy to survey. So anyhow, here's May, uh, very similar to the June slide of last year. Uh, June, we're drying up again. July, more dry. August, um, so August 28th, I missed the driest point of the year by about a week. Um, you can tell that by looking at the pools and seeing where they had re-wetted. There was, had been a rainstorm the previous week right after a heat spell. So I think right at the end of the heat spell before the rainstorm would have been the perfect time to get in there. Um, you could see that there had been some surface flows rearranging the leaves and some of the ripples. So just missed, but pretty darn close. And so you can see here that while I wasn't able to survey the entire stream on these headwaters areas or on the um, all of Mission Creek over here, this, just, this is the core wet area right here, and there really isn't a whole lot of it. Um, so this winter, when I get done with everything, I'm going to um, sit down in the GIS, measure the distances here, compare this from year to year. I have some historic habitat typing data from the 90s that I can apply and uh, measure dry ripples and pool distances and see if I can come up with some numbers. Um, September here, so September we came back and got some more water. Uh, October, um, I'm going to go out tomorrow and do uh, the October sampling. Uh, one of the goals of the project was to um, keep it simple. Here's the data sheet. We're not recording a whole lot. Um, the travel on the streams is pretty good. I can get six plus miles in a day. Usually do one tributary a day um, versus full on habitat assessment. I can only do about half, one half to uh, one mile of creek a day. So it was really important to move quickly. Um, you can take this protocol and keep adding extra stuff to it. But the more things you add, the more time you spend in the field until you throw in the kitchen sink. Um, and then all of a sudden you're looking at a full habitat assessment. And um, so, you know, consider wisely all the extras you want to tack on and that you can do. Um, so lessons learned, things to keep in mind here. Um, keep it simple, move fast, uh, refine your process uh, in working with the UC and then meeting Clio and learning some background behind this wet dry mapping process. Um, there's things that I can do better if we're going to continue to do this next year, which on at least a few of the trips, I hope I can. Um, I can collect data in the field much more efficiently. Um, I can certainly do some things to improve uh, data processing back at the office to make things faster. 
Um, collaborating with other folks, uh, working with friends is fun. Um, again, I can't save the world. I can't do it all by myself, so I have to rely on other folks that are out there um, already doing monitoring work, uh, rely heavily on our partners at the UC, um, folks like David over at NOAA, other branches within our own department, the water branch, um, uh, some of our HABCON folks that are trying to work on flow issues, um, the Army Corps of Engineers working on the broodstock program. If we weren't all working towards the same goal of recovering fish here, none of this would go on. Um, so here's a, another cool thing, inspiration saying for the end of the day, it's amazing what you'll find when you get out there and look. So um, if all we're doing is processing things in the office and going to lots of meetings, which are very important, um, we've got to get out in the world and see what's going on if we're ever going to make observations. Um, special thanks to Shane and Tracy who helped me uh, learn some new map skills. And that's all I have, unless folks have questions at the end here. But um, let's move and get Mariska up here and learn about survival of coho.